Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Chelsea. I'm happy to have you here in this space with me. And if you are returning, thank you. It's so good to see you again. And I'm excited to share today's practice with all of you. So today I am going to be leading you all through a runner-oriented yoga. So we're gonna get into the shoulders and our hips and mainly our lower body starting on our back. So you might need a few props to start. I have with me a strap. You can also use a scarf or you can even use like a t-shirt to drape over your but although if you're not super flexible in your hamstrings, I would recommend trying to find something that's a little bit longer. And then you might also need a block. And if you don't have a block, no worries. I can offer you a modification for what we're gonna be using it for because it's not very much. And some other helpful things to have are a blanket for underneath your knee for any of the poses. And I'm also, I'm also recommending the blanket to put underneath your knees for when we're sitting in a forward fold. So the way that you would traditionally have a yoga blanket, like the way that you would pick it up in a studio, is it's folded and it sort of looks like this shape. And you might even see them where they're folded once again, so it's in this rectangle shape. But what we're gonna be doing today is taking this blanket out of its fold and rolling it up in this way. So we have a pretty thick roll as you can see here and any time that you might need it in this orientation is when we're going to be in a forward fold. So this will just offer you some support underneath your knees if you're like me and have really tight hamstrings. I can comfortably sit without it but it's kind of nice to have especially in today's class. So if you do have access to a blanket and you wanna roll it up really fast, just go ahead and do that and then meet me back on your mat. Okay, so now that you've successfully grabbed any props that you might need, let's go ahead and get started on our back. And take with you your strap or your scarf, or you might even take that rolled up blanket, make it a little bit longer and fling it over your leg for you. <laughs> Okay, so when you come to lie down on your backside, just make sure that your shoulders and your low back are making contact with the floor. And you can start with your knees bent and just draping your strap or your scarf over your stomach because we're gonna be using it in a little bit. So you can have your hands resting on your belly or you can have your palms turned to face up towards the ceiling. And we're just gonna breathe here for a minute. So go ahead and close your eyes. Just beginning to check in with your breath. Without control, just noticing if your breaths are shallow or deep, long or short. Maybe you're noticing if you're breathing in and out through your nose, or maybe you're breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth. There's no right or wrong here. We're just observing. If it's comfortable for you, you can float your eyelids closed and let your knees back in towards each other. And shift your awareness towards your torso. And every time you breathe in, noticing where your rib cage goes. Maybe you notice that your chest lifts, maybe your front ribs lift, or you feel it more in your belly, just observing where you feel your breath. And then beginning to shift your breath, see if you can send your breath more into your back body and notice how your back body pushes the floor away just slightly. And 
and take a couple more breaths there. Really expanding through cage. And every breath in, your back just presses gently against the floor. Almost as if you're filling up your entire canister of your body. The space above your legs. And then release your breath. Just come back to a nice even in and out through your nose or your mouth, whichever you choose. And we're going to begin our class by sending both legs out long and reach your arms up overhead and just get really long in both directions, pointing your toes out away from you, reaching your hands out away from you, letting your ribs flare up towards the ceiling if you want to. Take a deep breath in, fill up your canister, and exhale. Release, bringing your arms down by your sides and hugging your right knee in towards your chest. Just being gentle here. The theme for today's class is going to be gentle movement, but functional movement. So we're going to use this idea of gentle movement as an intentional movement. So with your right knee hugged in towards your chest, grab your strap or your scarf, whatever you have on hand, and bring some part of the strap or the scarf around the ball mound of your right foot. And take your scarf or your strap in both hands and then slowly extend your right foot up towards the ceiling. And see if you can drop your shoulders down towards the floor and make a lightness in your grip on the strap. So you don't want to be pulling it down with all of your might. You want to keep a nice loose grip, almost as if your foot is lifting the strap and your arms are just there along for the ride. Keep your right foot flexed. And think about lengthening your right heel up towards the ceiling. And if your knee is bent, that's quite okay here. All we're looking for is a lengthening sensation along the back of your leg, whether that means that your knee is bent or it's a little bit more straight. If you notice that your shoulders are starting to lift up towards the ceiling, can you draw them back down towards the floor? And using the force of the ball mount of your right foot, see if you can lift the strap away. This is going to bring some engagement through your leg now. Lengthen your right hip down towards your left heel. And continue to push the strap away. Again, staying a little bit light in your grip, using the force of your right foot to push the strap away. See if you can let go of the strap, making your right leg do all of the work, pressing up towards the ceiling. Again, if your knee is bent, that's okay. You're doing just fine. Take one more breath here. Grab hold of your, your prop. And exhale, actively bend your right knee, pulling the ball mound of your foot towards your face with your strap and exhale, push the ball mound of your foot towards the ceiling, getting loose in your strap. One more time, inhale, pull your knee towards your chest and exhale, extend. See if you can keep that activation in your leg as you push towards the ceiling. Great job. Transfer your strap into your left hand and see if you can bring your right hand down towards the floor or you can bring it down towards your hip, whatever's gonna provide you with more stability. And even if your knee is bent here, just taking it over towards the left side, bringing your navel in and up, engaging your core. We're not going very far. Just enough to where you feel a lengthening sensation through the outer right hip. Being gentle but intentional as you push into your strap, 
See if you can engage your right leg any amount more. And inhale, coming back to center. You can release the strap away from your foot now and just set it off to the side for a moment. Hug your right knee in towards your chest, this time towards your right armpit so it's a little bit wider than we started. Breathing in and out of your nose. Go ahead and release your right leg. And pausing here on your back. Just noticing the difference between your right and left side. And take your arms up above your head, point your toes out away from you and stretch nice and long. And exhale, circle your arms down by your hips, bring your left knee in towards your chest and hug it in. Pausing here. And then finding your prop and bringing some sort of a flat edge of your prop, whether your strap or your scarf, and wrapping it around the ball mount of your foot. And then slowly and with control, press your left heel up towards the ceiling. This side might feel a little bit different than the other side, so just being mindful. I know my left side is a lot tighter, so my left knee is probably gonna be bent for most of this, but that's okay. Doing your best to lengthen your left heel up towards the ceiling. See if you can draw your left hip down towards your right heel just to make sure that your hips are in line with each other. And again, staying light with your grip on your strap. Can you push into the ball mound of your left foot? Engage your leg, bringing your navel in, engaging your core muscles here. And if you notice that your shoulders start to lift off the floor, can you bring them back down? Lightness in your grip on your prop. And see if you can push your ball mound into your strap so much so that your arm pull away. But your left leg is still engaging as you lengthen your heel up towards the ceiling. I know it's hard, but hold with me. And when you're ready, you can join your hands with your strap and transfer both pieces of your strap or scarf into your right hand. And your leg might need to bend a little bit to the side. And we're not going very far. Again, see if you can lengthen the ball mound of your foot away from you. You might feel a slight sensation towards the outer left hip. That's okay. Just breathe into that space where you feel tension. Again, the grip is not very tight here. We're using our leg for most of the work. And on your next inhale, come back towards center, release your strap, and hug your left knee in towards your chest, coming out a little bit wider towards your armpit. And when you're ready, slowly release your left leg to meet your right. Take one last stretch with your arms up above your head. Rounding or arching wherever you want. Just creating some length. Maybe you shake your legs out. And when you're ready, wrap your arms around your knees as you hug them in towards your chest and start to create a little bit of momentum as you roll forward and back. I'm not gonna do that because I have a microphone mounted to my back and it's not very comfortable. <laughs> so roll a couple of times until you meet me in a seated upright position and we'll take an easy seat. And if this seat in a cross-legged position is not easy for you, I would recommend coming to sit on your shins with your sit bones resting on your heels, or you can find your blanket, put that underneath your sit bones, something to raise them up so you're a little bit more comfortable. And I'm actually feeling comfortable here, so I'm gonna stay. So wherever you are, just bring your palms to the top of your thighs. 
Inhale, lengthening up through the crown of your head. And at the same time, see if you can lengthen your tailbone towards the floor. Rise and take a deep breath in through your nose. And exhale through your mouth. We'll do two more breaths together. Inhale through your nose. And exhale through your mouth. One more deep breath in through your nose. And exhale through your mouth. Sighing it out, letting your shoulders drop away from your ears. And I invite you to set an intention for your practice today. It can be as simple as I am gentle or I am calm. Something that reinforces this intentional movement while also being gentle and kind to yourself. I know as runners, we are very tight in our lower body and in the shoulder area. I know I am. So that's what we're going to work on today. But it also requires a little bit of kindness. And it might be humbling. <laughs> but we're all here practicing together. So once you have your intention, repeating that to yourself and then gently floating your eyelids open and coming to an all fours type of situation. So you're gonna have your hands stacked below your shoulders and your knees stacked below your hips. And we're gonna start with some gentle cat-cow movements. So on your inhale, lower your belly as you lift your head and your chest. Send your gaze up towards the ceiling. And as you exhale, push the floor away, rounding into the space between your shoulder blades. Drop the crown of your head towards the floor. Inhale, lower your belly, lift your head and your chest, coming back into your cow. And exhale, push the floor away, rounding into your upper spine, dropping the crown of your head towards the floor. One more time. Inhale, lift your head and your chest. And exhale, push the floor away, rounding into your upper spine. And stay here and see if you can walk your knees out wider than hip distance. Bring your big toe mounds together. And keeping this roundness in your upper back, can you start to send your sit bones towards your heels? You're going to have to push the floor away to keep this cat-like spine. Maybe you come up onto your fingertips and drag them back in space as you continue to lower your sit bones. Once you've made contact with your heels, go ahead and pause there. Pressing through your fingertips, rounding into the space between your shoulder blades. Gazing down between your knees. And on your next round of breath, walk your fingertips out away from you. Keeping length in your spine. As you send the crown of your head forward, continue to spider your fingertips towards the top of your mat until your forehead comes to rest. Balasana, child's pose, we have arrived. If you'd like to have a little bit more stretch sensation on your triceps, the backs of your arms, I invite you to bend at your elbows and bring your hands together in prayer behind the nape of your neck. You might need to walk your elbows in toward your ears to find a sensation that you want. And just notice where you feel this stretch. For me, I feel it on the back of my body, on the outside edges of my spine almost. So just observing where you might be feeling your stretch sensation. There really isn't a right or wrong here. The only thing we should avoid is any intense pain or sharp sensation. If you're feeling anything like that back out of the pose. Again, if it feels more comfortable, close your eyes. And just feeling your breath come in and out, preferably through your nose. If you have your hands behind your head, go ahead and release them down towards the floor. 
actively press your palms into your mat, engaging your upper body. And just as slowly as we came into Balasana, see how slowly you can come out of it. Again, engaging through that rounding sensation through your upper back as you rise your hips. Round, 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 push the floor away. Bring your knees back underneath your hips. And on your inhale, release, coming back into a neutral spine. Neutral just meaning parallel to the floor. Take a moment here to wiggle out anything you need to. And come back to stillness here at center. And we're gonna open up into the back body a little bit more on our hands and knees. So on your inhale, reach your right arm out to the side. And exhale, feed your right arm through your left as your right shoulder and right temple come down towards the floor. We're coming into a thread the needle. And then walk your left fingertips out away from you towards the top of your mat. At the same time that you're pressing down into the floor with your right shoulder, can you press into your left fingertips, spiraling through your upper back? Lengthen both sit bones back behind you. If you want to curl your toes under, you can. Take one more breath here. And when you're ready, return your left arm so that your left hand plants underneath your shoulder and gently press the floor away, reaching your right arm out to the side. Breathe in. And exhale, plant your right hand. Resituate yourself and prepare for the other side. So on your next inhale, reach your left arm out away from you. And exhale, feed your left arm through as you lower your left shoulder and your left temple down towards your mat. Crawl your right fingertips forward. Pressing down into your right shoulder, really your outside of your right arm should be pressing down into the floor and with your right fingertips engaging there and initiating this twist into your upper back. All the while lengthening your sit bones back behind you. Coming back to the awareness of your breath. Noticing if your breaths have become a little bit more rapid and can you take a deeper one just to settle. Return your right hand underneath your right shoulder, gently press the floor away, lifting your left arm out to the side. And exhale, return your right arm to your mat. Go ahead and curl your toes under. Plant through your hands, and whenever you're ready, go ahead and lift your hips up and back, coming into a downward facing dog with knees bent. And while you're here, notice if you're pressing both hands equally, and if you're not, can you make them more equal? And at the same time, draw your front ribs towards your navel so that you're not dumping into your back at any point, you're keeping everything in nice and tight. Line and your sit bones lengthening up and back. On your next inhale, shift your gaze forward and exhale, tiptoe your toes toward your hands, bending your knees as much as you need to to get there. Once you do, take an inhale, lift up halfway. Your hands can come to your shins. Lengthen the crown of your head forward. And exhale, reach your arms down, forward fold. And on your next inhale, rise up with a flat back. Reach your arms out wide and send them to cactus. On your next inhale, lift your chest and your gaze up towards the ceiling, keeping your cactus arms. 
and exhale, reach your arms out to the side and send them back behind you, interlacing your fingertips. If you cannot interlace your fingertips, you can grab hold of opposite elbows, or you can even take your strap and see if you need a little bit of space to grab hold behind here like that. I'm gonna go ahead and interlace here. So continue facing forward towards the top of your mat. Your feet can be hip distance apart. And inhale, lift your chest up towards the ceiling. And exhale, bend your knees and shift your torso forward, letting your hands come up above your head. If you have hold of opposite elbows, that's okay. Just continuing to hold. And if you have a strap, continuing to hold. We're just looking for a gentle sensation along the front side of the shoulders. And take an inhale. If you have your hands above your head, go ahead and bring them back towards your hips as you rise up with a flat back. Go ahead and release. Shake your arms out if you need to. Inhale, reach your arms out to the side. Bend practice. Inhale, reach your chest up towards the ceiling. And exhale as you're diving down towards the floor. See if you can lift your hands up and forward and dive down, rounding to your upper back as you make your way towards the floor. You can bend your knees as much as you need to here until your fingertips reach. Inhale, lift up halfway, lengthen. Your hands can come to your shins. Exhale, squat low, plant your hands and step back to either plank or your tabletop position. Take a deep breath in through your nose and exhale, lower your knees, bend at your elbows, lower your chin and your chest, pause here, and then exhale, push the floor away, round into your upper spine, let the crown of your head come down. Gaze at your frontal hip points as you let your hips fall down towards the mat. Bending slowly into your elbows, come down towards the floor. Let the tops of your feet rest on your mat and bring your hands beneath your forehead, just giving yourself something to rest on. Let's take a few rounds of breath here, resting on your belly. Observing your breath, coming back to the intention that you set at the beginning of your practice today. And on your next inhale, lift your head up off of your hands, plant your hands underneath your shoulders and slightly back behind you toward your low ribs. Curl your toes under, firm through your hands and press the floor away coming into a tabletop position. Pause here. Change the grip of your hands if you need to, making them shoulder distance apart and lift your hips up and back, coming into downward facing dog. Knees can be bent or you can press them slightly more towards straight, lengthening your heels down towards the floor. On your next inhale, lift your right leg up towards the ceiling, three-legged dog. And exhale, bend your right knee in towards your chest as you shift your shoulders above your wrists and plant your right foot in between your hands. If you have sensitive knees, now would be a put a blanket underneath your knee because we're going to lower your left knee down towards your mat. Keep your left palm planted about a foot's length away from your right foot and use your left thigh, or I'm sorry, your right thigh and your right hand to press into your upper thigh. We're coming into a gentle twist. If you want to, you can reach your right arm up towards the ceiling, making it a little bit more work. Grounding down into your right foot. And on your next exhale, rainbow your right arm forward as you begin to straighten your right leg, shifting your hips back towards your left heel. 
Inhale, come forward into your twisted lunge. Maybe you reach your right arm back. And exhale, rainbow your right arm, straighten your right leg, flex your right toes. We'll do that two more times. Inhale, come forward into your twisted lunge, reach back. Exhale, rainbow your arm forward as you shift your hips back. This time, inhale, come forward into your twisted lunge, reach your right arm back behind you and see if you can bend into your left knee. We're not connecting, but you're gonna feel an engagement on your, right, on your left hamstring. See if you can pulse your heel in towards your butt cheek. One more time, one more pulse and release, rainbow and straighten your right leg. Inhale, come forward, release your right foot, your right hand down toward your mat. Straighten through your left leg and step back to downward facing dog. We're gonna do that all again on the other side. So when you're ready, prepare, lift your left leg up towards the ceiling, three-legged dog. Exhale, pull your left knee in towards your chest as you shift your shoulders forward. Plant your left foot down. Shift your blanket if you have one and lower your right knee. Ground your right hand into your mat and send your left palm to your upper left thigh, or you can extend your left arm up towards the ceiling. Breathing into any sensation that you're feeling in your hip flexors. And we're gonna begin to move. So when you're ready, rainbow your left arm forward, straightening your left leg, flex your left toes. Breathe into the backside of your leg. Inhale, come through your twisted lunge. Maybe you reach back with your left arm. Exhale forward, straighten your left leg, flex your left toes. Inhale, come forward, reach your left arm back. And exhale, rainbow your left arm, straighten your left leg, flex your left toes. On your next inhale, come through your twisted lunge. See if you can reach your left arm back and flex your right toes as you lift your right heel towards your right butt cheek this time. I'm getting a cramp in this leg. <laughs> if you get one of those, just shake it out and come right back to pulsing. We have a few more breaths. Maybe it helps to point your toe, not for me. <laughs> one more pulse and go ahead and release your, left, your right toes down. Circle your left arm forward, plant it on the outside of your left leg, straighten your right knee and step it back to downward facing dog. Take a moment here to breathe. If you need a break, just drop down into your balasana. There's no wrong way to do this. Coming back to this gentle kindness as we move through the practice today. On your next inhale, shift your gaze forward and exhale, come down towards your knees into your tabletop shape. Let the tops of your feet go. Shift your shoulders forward in front of your fingertips and lower your chest and your chin. You can arch your back and then exhale, push the floor away Curl your tailbone under and lower your hips as you gaze down towards the floor. Allow your front body to melt down towards your mat. And this time take the opposite hand on top and lower your forehead. Take a few rounds of breath here on your own. creating space even though gravity is making it to where your entire body is resting on your rib cage. Just doing your best to fill up and expelling all the breath out. On your next inhale, lift your gaze. And we're gonna come into a half frog shape to stretch into the front side of our leg. 
And so I'm gonna offer a couple of different variations here for those of you who are either more flexible or less flexible. So we're gonna start with our left arm across our body. So your forearm is making complete contact. And depending on how flexible you are, you might need to bring your elbow in line with your wrist and then send it towards your body a little bit more. And so we're gonna be bending into our right leg and you can stay here if this is enough for you. You can stay here and think about lengthening your hip bones and pressing your frontal hip point. If you want to feel with me this front point that kind of juts out away from your hips, you wanna think about bringing that down towards the floor. And if you leave your index finger on your frontal hip point where it juts out, you can actually feel where it makes contact with your mat. And you can stay here, lift through your chest, push into your left arm for stability, and breathe into whatever sensation you're feeling. If you'd like to go a little bit further, you can reach your right arm back so it makes contact with the top side of your right foot. And you can simply press into your right hand and you can stay here, lifting your chest forward. If you're feeling a little bit more flexible in your quadriceps, you can actually bring your heel closer to your glute and you can do so by having your fingertips facing away from you and pressing down into the top side of your foot. Or if you have the movement in your shoulders and you have a little bit more flexibility there, you can actually spin your fingertips forward and press down into the big toe, your ball mound of your big toe. And it's almost like a resistance here. So wherever you are, just breathe a few more breaths, looking for a slight sensation in your quadricep and along your hip flexor area in whichever variation you choose. Whichever variation you're in, think about pressing your frontal hip points into your mat. Pressing into the floor through your left arm and go ahead and release, coming back down, lowering your forehead to the backs of your hands. And we're gonna move on to the other side. So lift your gaze. This time plant your right hand across your body so that your elbow and your wrist are in line with each other. And we're gonna start with the progression that we did on the other side. So using your left hand fingertipped to start winging your left elbow out to the side, simply bring your left heel toward your glute. And notice if this is enough. If you're looking for a little bit more, take your left index finger and find your frontal hip point and see if you can roll your frontal hip point down towards your mat. Notice if that changes anything. If you'd like to go further, reach back with your left hand and press into the frontal hip points and at the same time press your left foot into your hand. A little bit of engagement here. If you'd like to go further, bring your fingertips to face out away from you and press into the top side of your foot, finding a little bit of length through your quadriceps. And again, see if you can lengthen your frontal hip points down. Connecting with your mat. And if you're looking for a little bit further, go ahead and spin your fingertips forward and press down into the big ball mound of your foot. Wherever you are, breathing, space and length there. Being mindful of any intensity. And if you're feeling like it's too much, backing out of the pose. One more breath. And when you're ready, go ahead and gently release. Take your arms out in front of you, planting one palm on top of the other and resting your forehead once again. Taking a couple of big deep breaths.
On your next inhale, go ahead and lift your gaze. Bring your hands beside your low ribs. Curl your toes under. And we're gonna prepare to roll onto our back. So take your right arm out in front of you. You might have to lift up a little bit to do so. And simply roll over onto your right shoulder. And you might come off your mat, so just make your way onto your back body and see if you can grab your blanket roll and bring it more towards the center of your mat. So right now you're on your back. Just pausing for a moment. And we're gonna do a reverse zombie lift just to engage through the core a little bit and make you work before we completely relax. <laughs> we still have a little bit more time here. So when you're ready, reach your arms up towards the ceiling and point your toes out away from you and see if you can zip your, your legs in towards midline. So you sort of look like a zombie on the floor. And I don't know how many of you have done Pilates, but we're gonna work with the pelvic floor, firming this in so we're not pressing outward into our abdomen. We're actually holding everything in tight to lift ourselves up. So we're gonna start with the pelvic floor. So see if you can lift your pelvic floor in and up. And the sensation might be easily described as bringing your sit bones towards each other, almost like a sucking in sensation. See if you can feel that and release. And we're gonna go a little bit more. So bring your pelvic floor in and up, lengthen your tailbone down towards your heels and see if you can engage the space between your belly button and your pubic bone. You are gonna feel a firming sensation. So if you want to feel this space between your navel and your pubic bone, and when you lengthen your tailbone down towards the floor, notice how it firms there. So you almost wanna take your middle finger in if you're wrapping your hands around your hips and just feeling that space and release. You can leave your arms down to feel into that space. And this time bring your pelvic floor in and up. <clears throat> Lengthen then your sit bones down towards your heels and firm that space between your navel and your pubic bone. Once you feel the firmness, reach your arms back up towards the ceiling and you're gonna keep this engagement through your core and you wanna send your fingertips forward, lift your head off the floor, lift your shoulder blades, come up, 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 really engage, bring your navel in until you come up to a seat. And we're gonna go back down. So reach your arms forward. Roll your tailbone so that your sit bones are tucked underneath and almost think about sucking your navel in as you reach your arms forward, lower down. You can walk your heels back slowly. Use the engagement that we just built to lower slow and with control until your backside of your head comes down, reach your arms back up. We're gonna do that one more time or two more times, sorry. So when you're ready, Invite everything into the party. Bring in your pelvic floor, lengthen your tailbone down towards your toes, and really engage your navel by bringing it in and send your fingertips forward. Lift your head, lift your shoulders, lift your upper body, come to an upright seat and engage. Think about reaching over a beach ball, bringing your navel in. Engaging through your pelvic floor, lower down, slow and with control. One vertebrae at a time, roll down, roll down. And if you want a little bit of an extra challenge, reach your arms up overhead. See if you can keep your frontal ribs lengthening toward your navel, continuing to engage all of the spaces that we just did. Last one, reach your arms up and forward. Come your shoulder blades, lift them up. Come all the way up to seat and relax. Shake your legs out and grab your blanket roll if you know that you need it and just wedge it underneath your knees for a gentle variation of a forward fold. The only thing that should be really engaged right now is your feet flexed so that your toes are facing up towards the ceiling. 
We're gonna do a forward fold here. So on your inhale, reach your arms up beside your ears. And exhale with a flat spine, shift your torso forward, reach your fingertips forward. And once you feel like you can't go forward anymore with a straight spine, lower your hands towards your mat. Inhale, lift your chest, lift your gaze forward. And exhale, fold. A little bit of rounding in your lower back is okay. The goal is to lengthen your, the crown of your head forward or up, depending on where you're at. See if you can flex your pinky toes toward your face just as much as your big toes are. And with every breath, just noticing any more length. Maybe you feel it in your low back, through your outer hips, the back sides of your legs and into your calves. Breathing into the space that you're creating here. Coming back to the intention that you set for yourself at the beginning of your practice today. On your next inhale, ground down through your palms, lift up halfway, lift your gaze up. And exhale, slowly release the pose. You can shake your legs out. Bring your arms back behind you and move your blanket roll out of the way. Bend into your knees so much that your feet plant down, hip distance apart, and just gently windshield wiper your knees back and forth. We're gonna do one more seated posture. So when you're ready, come back to center. Come up to a seat and lengthen your right leg forward and bend your right knee and let it drop out to the side so much so that the sole of your left foot comes towards your right thigh. And this could mean that your heel is more towards your groin or you can send it more towards your knee. Your flexibility in your hips is gonna dictate that. So go to wherever's comfortable and you wanna make sure that your hips are facing forward. If you really don't have a lot of space here and both of your sit bones are not pressing down into the floor, go ahead and open your hips out to the side. It's important to just keep your right knee facing up towards the ceiling and your toes flexed. I'm gonna close my hips off and forward just because I have this space too. So if you do, go ahead and take this variation Bring your arms out in front, take a deep breath in, lift up through the crown of your head, and exhale, just as we did in the forward fold, send the crown of your head towards the front of your room. You can plant your hands down on either side of your leg, or you can bring your hands to either side of your calf. Or maybe you're so upright that your hands are resting on top of your shin. Any variation is okay. What we're looking for is some sensation out along the left side body. You're probably feeling it in your hips or on the back side of your leg. Just breathe into whatever sensation is the strongest and see if you can release some tension on your next exhale. And when you're ready, walk your hands back towards your knee so that you're sitting upright and release your left leg forward, shake your legs out. And we're gonna take that same pose on the other side. So go ahead and bend your right knee in towards your chest, letting it drop out to the side and connect the right sole of your right foot towards your left inner thigh. And again, if you need a little bit more space, you can open your hips up. And I forgot to mention this on the other side, but if you do have open hips, like if your hips are open to the side, you can reach your arms out in a diagonal shape instead of forward, because it might be a little bit uncomfortable. So whichever variation you're in, 
send your hands either on either side of your left leg or towards the center. Lift up through the crown of your head, flex through your left toes, and exhale just as we did in our forward fold. Begin to walk your hands forward, sending the crown of your head towards your toes. You can close your eyes. Breathing into whichever sensation you feel the strongest. And knowing to back out if you're feeling any sharp pain. Coming back to this idea of gentle, intentional movement, or in this case, intentional hold. <laughs> On your next inhale, lift your gaze, walk your hands back towards your hips so that you're sitting nice and upright. Release your right leg and shake your legs out. And when you're ready, shift your hips forward, bending into your knees and planting your feet. Take your hands to the back sides of your thighs and slowly roll down one vertebrae at a time, nice and controlled. Pause here, and we're gonna take one round of an engaged bridge pose. So walk your feet back towards your glutes. See if you can walk your heels as close to your glutes as is comfortable. And widen your feet so they're hip distance apart or maybe a little bit wider, and slightly pigeon toe your feet towards center. Plant your hands on either side of your body palms facing down towards the mat. Invite all of the people into the party. Bring your pelvic floor in and up. Squeeze the space between your navel and your pubic bone just enough to lift your sacrum off the floor, your low back. Press into your feet, lift, lift, lift. Continue to lift your hips up towards the ceiling. You can even use your hands as help here. Slight engagement through your glutes here. Pressing down into your mat with your feet. Notice all the work that your lower body is having to do here in this bridge pose. Continuing to lift and squeeze and hold. Breathing in and out through your nose, nice and strong. This will be the most strength that you use all of class, so make it count. Press the floor away through your legs. If you're feeling confident, see if you can shift your weight onto your left foot, lifting your right knee up towards the ceiling. Continue to lift, lift your hips and lower. Transfer your weight into your right foot, lift your left knee, lift your hips. Press the floor away. Your glutes might be burning, mine are too. Lower your left foot down. One more time, lift your hips, press the floor away. Breathe in and exhale slow and with control. Send your spine to roll down one vertebrae at a time. Once you've reconnected all the parts of your spine towards your mat, heel toe your feet out to the side and let your knees knock in towards each other. Allow your hands to rest along your belly and float your eyelids closed. Allow your breath to come back to neutral. And when you're ready, send your left leg long and then your right leg long. Lift your arms up overhead, stretch in opposite directions. And we're gonna take banana asana to the left. So walk your left heel towards the top left corner of your mat and then take your right heel to meet your left. You can even cross your right leg over your left and then 
walk your left shoulder towards the back left corner. Take your arms over to the left and you can grab hold of your left wrist with your right hand coming into a banana shape, also known as banana asana. You can shift your gaze towards the left to make it a little bit more comfortable for your neck. Breathing into your right side body here. You can float your eyelids closed if that's comfortable for you. And when you're ready, blink open your eyes, send your hands back to center, uncross your right leg over your left and walk your feet back towards center. Reach in opposite directions here in a straight line. And then we're gonna take this on the other side. So walk your right heel towards the back right corner of your mat. Take your left heel to meet your right and cross your left leg over. And then take your arms towards the right side corner and maybe you walk your shoulders over a little bit just to create a little bit more stretch in your left side body and grab hold of your right wrist with your left fingertips whenever you're ready. This is one of my favorite poses for side body stretch. It's not very intense, but it's definitely effective. And if you disagree with me, let me know in the comments. Sending your breath into your left side body this time. And when you're ready, bring your arms back to center, uncross your left leg over your right and walk your legs back to center. And stretch in opposite directions one last time. And as you exhale, lower your arms down by your sides, turning your palms to face up and widen your feet so that they're mat distance apart and letting your feet flop out to the sides. If you need a little bit more space, you can bring your blanket roll up underneath your knees. If it helps you, you can widen your arms out a little bit into a wider V shape. And lengthen your spine by lifting your head, reaching the crown of your head away from you, and then letting the backside of your head rest back down on your mat. As you settle into your back body, Float your eyelids closed. And release the control of your breath. Just letting it come in and out naturally through your nose. And as you settle in, just doing a quick body scan from your head all the way down to your toes. Releasing any remaining tension as you do so. Finally, floating your eyelids closed, releasing any tension in your jaw and the space between your eyebrows. And gently settle into your final rest, your Shavasana.
begin to take a slightly deeper breath. And wiggle your fingers and your toes. Circle your ankles and your wrists. And find any gentle movement that allows you to come on over to your right or left side, whichever you choose today. Just allowing your head to be supported in your palm. And resting here for a moment. And with as little effort as possible, pressing yourself up to a comfortable seat and meeting me here with your palms together at heart center and bowing your head slightly to keep your practice humble. I invite you back to the intention that you set at the beginning of your practice today. And repeat it to yourself. And allow this intention to guide you through the rest of your day or into the week ahead whenever you're watching this video. The light within me honors, lifts, and respects the light inside of each of you. I recently learned a new word in Sanskrit, it means thank you, Danyavada. Thank you for allowing me to guide you through your practice today. And I'll see you again soon.